the wicked devil. Here in Chennai, we call it the Ponna Pakarada, the girl seeing. Even though this was a very informal one, that is still what it was. Suchitra and Sumitra, their mum and dad, Geeta and Raman, receiving Raman's friend from the past, Valli, his wife, Meena, and their two sons, the eligible, foreign-returned, tall, dark and handsome Amit and the youngster Shamit. Vali and family were coming over for coffee since they just happened to be in that part of the city. Amit had finished his studies and had returned to Chennai and his parents were dragging them around visiting relatives and suitable friends and temples to give thanks for his dutiful return to run his appa's business. Geeta had been in a flurry all day ensuring things were perfect. The perfect light vade, the aromatic coffee, the shining ever silver stainless steel dabra tumbler, the sweetest smelling flowers for the girl's plaits and her own bun, crisply pressed shirt and veshti for Raman, even new saris for the maid and cook. The living room was immaculate and everything was checked and rechecked multiple times. This was no casual drop-in, no matter how many times she told Sumi and Suchi that. They knew, of course, but they'd been brought up to expect this, and so however much they protested, they would behave appropriately. Amit and family trooped in on schedule, and polite introductions were made. There was a great reunion-type meeting between Raman and Valli, They'd been college mates and hostel mates in the long ago and if they could now again be closely connected, that would be wonderful. This text was of course completely unspoken in the presence of the younger ones. Geeta and Meena also seemed to get off on the right foot. Sumi immediately started up a conversation with Amit. She'd always been the livelier one, younger only by 11 minutes but infinitely younger in spirit. Youthful energy bubbled up out of this beautiful flower of a girl, roving magpie eyes, vivacious, chattering lips, hands that moved gracefully as she talked. Amit responded to the sunshine of her attention. His back became straighter, his pecs pushed out a fraction more, and his knees spread imperceptibly more, making him look manly and confident. Suchi's gentler, all-seeing eye came to rest on Shamit, who looked bored to tears. With a muffled chuckle, she turned to chat with him, and such was her skill that soon the two were engrossed in a discussion on tennis, was it? Or chemistry, was it now? Trust Suchi to notice that straggly little detail. Coffee and refreshments were brought out and were well appreciated. Suchi blushed sweetly when Amma gave her credit for some of the snacks. It's true, Suchi had made them. And Sumi laughed dismissively when Appa acknowledged her contributions too. The girls exchanged a wordless glance and shared a grin. Amit looked from one to the other. They were both beautiful and clever and graceful. But Sumi would always get the attention. Suchi was too quiet. Though she certainly seemed to have hit it off well with Shamit, which was lucky because Shamit was at that age when girls was practically a bad word in his vocabulary. He maintained they knew nothing interesting and spoke only of clothes and movie stars and he'd been disgusted at being dragged around. So had Amit, for that matter. And he seemed to have lucked out too. Black-eyed, raven-haired, slender-waisted, utterly feminine, so similar in looks and so different in temperament. Best part of the temple trawling trip so far, no doubt about that. The afternoon ended pleasantly, with Valli and family heading off to yet another temple and Raman and family waving to them from the doorstep. No mention had been made of further meetings. 
The girls sped off to their room before they could be stopped. Raman and Geeta exchanged satisfied glances as they flopped down on the sofa. It had gone well. The families had seemed to mesh well together. So typical of Suchi to reach out to the fully fed up younger brother, no? If the families were to be united, this was a very good start. Now they must wait to hear from the boy's side. He devoted himself almost exclusively to Sumi, so his choice was fairly evident. The wait was not long. The very next day, even before Raman could open the topic at home, he received a call from Valli to say that Amit was in favour. But he would like to go out with the girls a few times before giving a final decision. Valli had himself argued that no father of girls would ever permit such a thing. But Meena had assured him that times had changed since when they were young and perhaps if both girls would come together, Raman and Geeta might be agreeable. So, almost shamefacedly, that's what Valli was suggesting. With profuse apologies on behalf of his wayward son, but what to do about this modern generation? Going abroad to study means they came back with all these fancy ideas. Fully forget their native traditions. Raman could see his friend's embarrassment was genuine. And indeed, times had changed. And he was now unsure of what his own girls would say in spite of all the indications. He was caught wrong-footed since he'd not yet discussed anything with his family. So he made the appropriate noises and said he'd talk it over with Geeta and the girls and get back as soon as he could. That evening... He brought up the topic at home. He didn't mention Amit's proviso. First, he wanted to hear what they had to say. Sumi admitted that she'd liked what she'd seen of him. Suchi put her head down and grinned but said nothing. Geeta beamed. Then he mentioned the call from Valli and what he'd said. The girls went silent. Geeta was stunned for the moment too. The signs had been so favourable. Such requests were quite common nowadays, she knew that. But yesterday, Sumi and Amit had seemed to get on so well, she was completely unprepared. Suchi spoke up first. This was a good sign, she said. Marriage was a long-term contract, one should be absolutely sure. Anyone could put up a pretense for an hour or two. But meeting regularly would reveal a person's true character. She'd be willing to do her part for Sumi. They'd go out together and so Sumi also would be certain what she was getting into. They should say yes, she said, in her firm, logical, practical way. She held Sumi's hands when she'd finished and the two girls exchanged some unspoken communication. Something rippled over Sumi's face. She looked at her sister deeply. The room was in a freeze frame. Then suddenly, Sumi smiled brightly and nodded first to her sister and then to her parents. I agree, but only if Suchi is with me all the time. I will not be alone with him even for one minute until he has given his word. The twins hugged. I won't let you down soon, I promise, said Suchi. And Geeta and Raman were hugely relieved. Suchi had somehow pulled it off. She was quieter than Sumi most of the time, but she was very level-headed and could be quite authoritative as if those 11 minutes made her truly the elder and wiser one. It was agreed. Raman would inform Vali of the counter-proviso. Amit started to come home or the girls would meet him outside, movies, cafes... Sumi and Amit got on well, often agreeing, but just as often arguing. Suchi kept things on a more even keel, sometimes restraining her impetuous sister with a glance or a touch. If coffee had to be brought or something had to be done, it was always Sumi who did it, since she was adamant about not being alone with him even for a minute. Suchi would dress and be ready and waiting first, and Sumi would come down only later, a few minutes after Amit arrived. Once or twice, 
Geeta had scolded her for being late, but she said she wanted to look her best. And Geeta had smiled indulgently and let it go. Suchi would hold fort, and so she and Amit also became comfortable with each other, bantering good-naturedly. Vali and Meena gently broached the subject with Amit, but he snapped at them and said he hadn't yet decided. This was a matter of his whole future, and they shouldn't rush him. Then he stalked off and banged the door. They were stunned. This was most unlike Amit. He was a very even-tempered fellow, and it took a deal to ruffle him. He even barked at Shamit over some trivial thing, though he apologized later, which was even more odd. The air was thick with tension. Geeta's gentle prodding of Sumi was waved off with a casual, "I'm not ready yet, Amma. I need some more time." Suchi was the epitome of patience. She kept her parents at bay with a glance and reminded her sister how charming Amit was. This was difficult for the gentle Suchi, and she blushed furiously as she recounted his many attributes. Still, Sumi whined, "But I'm not sure yet, Suchi." The parents stood by helplessly. She always seemed bright and charming in his presence, running on light feet to bring this or that. Yet she insisted she was not sure. What surety did she want? They couldn't understand. The men were good friends, but the situation that their children had put them in was such a prickly one. They didn't know how to handle it. So both sides stayed silent. And the three young ones continued going out or staying in together at the twins' house. Sometimes Geeta would come across Amit and Suchi chatting together while Sumi had run off on some fool's errand or other. And so a month and a half passed, and both sets of parents were jumpy as cats. Amit was becoming more and more silent and broody and irritable at home, and still not giving any answer. and vali and meena knew something was badly wrong sumi was happy as a lark and smiling and singing sweetly around the house but also unwilling to give any answer suchi was extremely tight and tense but still felt she'd be able to convince her sister since she knew that amit really was a wonderful person the situation was untenable They weren't willing to go forward, but they weren't willing to break it off either. Both families were fraught. Finally, Raman gave an ultimatum. This weekend he must have an answer. She could not go out with him for months and then say no. It would not do. It was not right. Modern generation or anything, he was determined. Sunday evening, he must have an answer. Geeta was mortified. Suchi was in tears. But Sumi was calm. Okay, Appa, I'll accept your deadline," she said confidently. Come Saturday evening, she was taking forever with her dressing and her hair. It was, after all, a momentous occasion, her last chance to make the big decision. Geeta called her once, and she said she'd be down soon. Then, ten fifteen minutes later, Suchi came and called her, looking very flushed and agitated. Come on, Sumi, we've been waiting for ages. How long can I keep chatting with him? It's very awkward. You're looking lovely now. Let's go," she scolded, pulling her sister. "Yes, my dearest sweet Such, it is indeed very awkward for you. Come, let's go down together," intoned Sumi agreeably. As the two sisters went down hand in hand, Sumi dragging a suddenly leaden-footed Suchi behind her. Amit, ever polite, rose as they entered the room. His eyes flitted between the two beautiful sisters still holding hands, Suchi just a step behind. One was and would ever be a radiant butterfly. But the other had a glow too, though it was a softer and gentler light. They sat and he sat opposite each other like adversaries. No one spoke. Suchi had her eyes down, but her face was flushed. Amit looked uncomfortably from one to the other. Something was evidently on the brink. Only Sumi looked relaxed. So, 
Are you too ready to admit it yet? She asked sweetly, chucking her sister's sharply raised head under her chin. Sumi's smile spread from ear to ear as Suchi went red like a tomato and Amit looked as if a dam had burst inside him. Hmm, looks like you finally are. I think you can take it forward from here without me, huh? She dropped a kiss on her still slack-jawed sister's forehead and flounced out of the room clattering noisily. She'd known on day dot when Suchi had held her hands and tried to convince her. But she'd also known that Such would need time to know herself, so she'd made it her job to make the time for her beloved elder sister. They were far more suited to each other. That was as plain to her as a nose on a face. Suchi and Amit were left in the room, reaching out to each other with longing in their eyes and hearts, and shocked that this had happened and overwhelming thanks to Sumi for knowing even before they had, and a hundred other things, but mostly that it was so deliriously, unbelievably, ecstatically wonderful that this impossible dream had somehow come true. All the absences, the reticence and the habitual lateness suddenly made blinding sense. They heard her merrily shouting as the door shut. Appa, I can give you your answer now. No need to wait till tomorrow evening. They both burst out laughing as they reached hesitantly for each other after weeks of keeping all that burgeoning emotion in check. Sumi really was a wicked devil.